This interesting device is called Newton's Cradle. It has five identical metal spheres suspended like pendulums. The motion and interactions involved seem to be obvious. Obvious until you attempt to explain what is actually going on here. There is something odd about the behavior of this system. Let's follow it through a cycle. Raising one sphere gives the sphere some gravitational potential energy. Releasing the sphere, this energy converts to kinetic energy, energy of motion. At the bottom of the swing, it now has maximum kinetic energy and strikes the row of spheres. The metal spheres interact in what physicists call an elastic collision. Energy is efficiently transferred from sphere to sphere, resulting in the end sphere being displaced. If the collision were completely efficient and there was no friction acting on the system, this last sphere would rise to the same height as the start position. Energy is conserved. Like a pendulum, this system will swing back and forth, energy smoothly changing from potential to kinetic. Friction will eventually bring this system to a halt. The energy transformed to heat energy. I mentioned that there is something odd about the behavior of this system. Why is only the single end sphere displaced from the row, particularly on the first strike? Why not two spheres or all of them? Some small motion does start to appear in the remaining spheres, partially due to some resonance and flex in the frame, but the significant motion is in the single end sphere. It represents most of the energy of the system. Why is only the single end sphere displaced from the row? What will happen if I raise two spheres? How many spheres will be displaced? One, two, all of them? Let's find out. Interesting, two were displaced. Why not one? You would think that a single sphere displaced and moving with greater velocity would satisfy the law of conservation of energy. Apparently we need to consider something else, and that is the momentum of the system. Momentum is the tendency of a moving object to continue moving, and momentum is conserved. The principle states that when two objects collide, the total momentum of the objects before the collision is equal to the total momentum of the objects after the collision. The momentum of an object is the product of its velocity times its mass, and linear momentum is a vector quantity, that is, it possesses a direction. Momentum and kinetic energy can be represented by two formulas. Kinetic energy equals one-half mv squared. And momentum, represented by the letter p, equals mass times velocity. These two formulas dictate the motion of this system. Both momentum and energy must be conserved. With the single sphere reaction, because mass and velocity are the same at each end of the sphere chain, the formulas confirm that both momentum and energy are conserved. Now consider this. Let's raise one sphere and release it and assume that two spheres are displaced from the other end. We are not seeing this happen with this system, but we are asking the question, is it possible? And would this satisfy the requirements of both conservation of momentum and energy? Let's do the math. In this thought experiment, the single sphere with a mass m strikes with a velocity of v. A series of collisions with the other spheres ends with two spheres leaving with an unknown velocity, v2. We can determine the velocity v2 by assuming that momentum has been conserved. The momentum at the start of the action is m times v and it must equal the momentum at the end, 2m times v2, the unknown velocity. Note the mass is now 2m because we have two spheres in motion. So we have m times v equals 2m times v2. Solving for v2, we get v2 equals v divided by 2, or v over 2. This means the two spheres would be moving with a velocity of v over 2, one half the original velocity. Now let's see if kinetic energy has been conserved. 
we will ignore friction. The formula for kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. Kinetic energy in, at the start, is 1 half mv squared. v is the same velocity we used for the momentum calculation. They are the same. Kinetic energy out is 1 half 2m times v over 2 squared. Remember we have double the mass, that's 2m, and the velocity is now v over 2, as determined by the momentum calculation. Note that in this formula, velocity is squared, introducing an exponential component to the calculation. As you can see, we have a problem. Energy has not been conserved. The kinetic energy in does not equal the kinetic energy out. The math is telling us one sphere striking the row of spheres will not displace two spheres, only one. The only action that respects both the laws of conservation of energy and momentum requires that if a single sphere enters the system, a single sphere exits the system. This results in the same velocity in and out. This also explains why when you release two spheres, two spheres are displaced from the other end. Again, conservation of momentum and energy must be respected. This, of course, is a somewhat abstract mathematical explanation. For some different and more conceptual approaches to this analysis, check out the resources at hyloroad.com cradle. If you have a Newton's cradle, try some of these collisions. Again, the results are an impressive demonstration of the conservation of momentum and energy. For more science and technology videos, visit our website hyloroad.com